Seems to be the routine lately with this uh, software. I apologize everyone. Thank you for rejoining us. I'm going to uh, just hold off for just a few moments and let everybody catch up to us on the new link. And uh, I tested this earlier today and everything seemed to be working fine. It just seems that when I'm going live, the program freezes on me. So. Doug, I know you're on with me this evening. I think we're going to have to look at a new program. I know we get interfered with, especially when we start talking about topics like we are tonight. Excuse me, which is fallen angels. So, you know, I guess I can attribute it to interference, but it's probably also just the software has developed some bugs and we need to move on to something else. I know uh, Sunday we had the same problem for those of you that are joining us this evening um, and did not listen to the Sunday broadcast. Um, this same issue right when we went live on the air uh, cropped up. So uh, we'll work on it between now and Thursday. No big deal. We're going to move right along. Let me check the chat room here, see if we've got everybody with us. Looks looks like we're good okay everybody can see in here thank you eileen and we'll move right on into it without any more delays thanks doug um thursday we'll also have this kind of a programming note um there was a uh, suggestion in the chat room on sunday that we use the chat room feature within patreon and uh we have an alternative to that particular chat room software that Doug sent to me today. I took a look at it. Looks very good. Um, looks like something that we can have what I try to create here, and that's a safe environment for people to communicate with one another. And uh, I know that you all really appreciate a chat room that is safe. We don't have trolls. We don't have people that are purposely trying to be disruptive and rude and I'm concerned that that m may happen in the Patreon environment with their um, chat room. So I'm not at liberty to let you know what that chat room is that we're going to move to because I want to take a look at it make sure it's appropriate and have some time to do that. So tomorrow I will be doing that when I don't have a live stream to prepare for. And then Thursday, I'll let you know the results of what I looked at. Doug really uh, endorses it because he has other clients that use it and have used it with success. So we'll probably go with it. Okay. Um, if it gets too noisy, I'll close the window again. But it is getting kind of warm this evening. We had some rain here in the the uh, northwest, northeast here, the northeast part of the country, and. Uh, kind of hot and humid but if it gets too noisy I'll go ahead and turn that close that window and we'll get rid of that background noise so tonight we would like to get into just dis uh, a discussion about fallen angels in general and I'm going to jump right over to scripture to set the uh, set the foundation for that discussion and Let me um, just jump around a little bit. I had to close all my tabs in order to restart our live stream. Give me just a moment to get that tab open. We are going to be speaking about a company that I've mentioned for three years now by the name of Sanctuary.ai and I wanted to revisit that again this evening. Not that they have anything new to uh, present publicly but I wanted to go ahead and um, just update new patrons whom, that have come aboard in the last year and haven't really heard me explain the background to Sanctuary.ai um, but it is worth catching up and worth a review as well for all of us. Some of the players, you'll recognize their names. 
Um, I've focused on them quite a bit in the past, but the point is I want to fold in the discussion of sanctuary AI with the whole discussion of fallen angels. And interestingly enough, a topic that I rarely ever get into, and we're going to talk a little bit, just a little bit, about the latest news that has come out regarding the U.S. government and UFOs, okay? Give me just a moment. I will open up our scripture. Apparently that was closed out as well, so somebody's playing games in the background. This is Jude 1.6, and I'm going to switch the screen and put that scripture up as I begin to read this. We'll start with verse 3, actually. Jude chapter 1, verse 3. Beloved, although I made every effort to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt it necessary to write and urge you to contend earnestly for the faith entrusted once for all to the saints. For certain men have crept in among you unnoticed, ungodly ones who were designated long ago for condemnation. They turn the grace of our God into a license for immorality, and they deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Although you are fully aware of this, I want to remind you that after Jesus had delivered his people out of the land of Egypt, he destroyed those who did not believe and the angels who did not stay within their own domain, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in eternal chains until darkness, bound for judgment on that great day. In like manner, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them who indulged in sexual immorality and pursued strange flesh are on display as an example of those who sustain the punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way these dreamers defile their bodies, reject authority, and slander glorious beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he disputed with the devil over the body of Moses, did not presume to bring a slanderous charge against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. These men, however, slander what they do not understand. And like irrational animals, they will be destroyed by the things they do instinctively. Woe to them! They have traveled the path of Cain. They have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam. They have perished in Korah's rebellion. These men are hidden reefs in your love feasts, shamelessly feasting with you, but shep shepherding only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried along by the wind, fruitless trees in autumn, twice dead after being uprooted. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Now, I'm just going to relate from memory some of the things that I've shared over the years about some of the individuals that are under the spell, quite literally, of the fallen angels, leaders in technology. Dr. Jordy Rose, co-founder of D-Wave, is a person I have many times cited in these live streams. Dr. Suzanne Gilder, who likewise worked at D-Wave, left D-Wave with Jordy Rose to found Kindred Robotics, Artificially Intelligent Robotics. And from there, the two of them, Dr. Gilder, Dr. Rose, left and founded yet another company, Sanctuary.ai. In December, and I'm going to go to my notes here, December of 2017, I was interviewed by a friend of mine on the radio, on terrestrial radio, on Ground Zero Radio by Clyde Lewis. 
This was December 21st of 2017. And I was speaking specifically about D-Wave and Jordy Rose. And I also brought up the breaking news in December of 2017 that he had founded Sanctuary.ai. It was not long after my public announcement of that information that Sanctuary.ai, their website, went live and they let the world know that they existed. At that particular time, when they first announced their landing page only, because as you have seen from the link that I sent to you of their present landing page, you need a password to get into their website. And such was the case when they first went public with their website. At that time, the graphic were concrete stairs leading from a room above, a building above, down into a dark dungeon-like basement. Let me give you the definition for sanctuary, not from their website, but from Merriam-Webster. And I think we have that here. Sorry, when that live stream went down, this pretty much destroyed a lot of my links, so I have to reorganize them. We'll get through it. This is not the way I usually operate, you know that. Okay, Merriam-Webster, definition of sanctuary. The ancient Hebrew temple at Jerusalem, or its holy of holies. That's the first thing that Merriam-Webster cites in the definition of sanctuary as a consecrated place. The most sacred part of a religious building, such as the part of a Christian church in which the altar is placed, the room in which general worship services are held, a place such as a church or a temple for worship, a place of refuge and protection, a refuge for wildlife where predators are controlled and hunting is illegal, the immunity from law attached to a sanctuary. Please fold all those into my defining verbally, describing for you, their original graphic, which I have searched on Google Images and cannot locate, but very ominous looking, a set of stairs moving down into a dungeon, unless they were driven by fallen angels. Now, if you go to their website, to their landing page at sanctuary.ai, and I'm going to put that up on the screen. This is from Google Official General Intelligence. That's known as AGI in the world of AI. But look at the background image. It is a portal, and it is a very dark image. I've had different images since 2018, February of 2018, when they first opened their website. Very dark imagery. Why would a technology company choose dark imagery? Why would they do that? I'd like to present Jordy Rose in case you've never seen an image of Jordy Rose. Presentation is he is promoting brains with artificially intelligent synthetic bodies. And as I've presented to you over the years as well, their proclamation, their statement is to build synthetics, what they call synths, synthetic life forms that they state, their words, will be indistinguishable from humans. That can only be done biologically. That will be done through DNA and RNA. That will be done through what we talked about on Sunday. Mr. Wilson asked the question in the chat room about the ability to 3D print with DNA, the bioprinters, three-dimensional bioprinters, technology that Dr. Craig Venter that I cited on Sunday presented 10 years ago to NASA and has been researching and publishing papers 
on this ability to digitize DNA, transmit it through the cloud, and reproduce a biological life form at the other end using a 3D bioprinter. This is how this will be done with Sanctuary.ai. On the right hand side is Dr. Suzanne Gildert that I mentioned a moment ago who left D-Wave and Kindred with Jordy Rose and they worked there together. On the left in that image of the two females is one of their nuts and bolts robots. I urge you to disavow any of their imagery, any of their statements about robots that they are building that are nuts and bolts, plastic and metal. That's the magician's misdirection. They are building biological synthetics. All this other robotic stuff that they like themselves. Okay, talk about hubris. But that's all a synthetic that is indistinguishable from a human is to do so with human DNA and messenger RNA. Okay, back, look at the hand gesture. Look presentations, particularly in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is where D Wave and Sanctuary and Kindred have their home offices. They have formed a group code. They have their conferences, and Holly Peck has presented as one of the employees, one of the founders of Sanctuary, alongside Dr. Suzanne Gill, women who code videos. And you look at these women from Sanctuary.ai and the clothing that they're wearing. They wear black. Okay. Present as witches. Now, I'm not saying who code out of Vancouver, but from a spiritual interpretation only event, but in the background at Sanctuary.ai, spiritually, I interpret his position as... Yes, dear? All right. 